All right. Well, I'm ready. Ready as I will be, I guess. Kill it. Kill what? <laughs> are we doing this uh, Twitch or are you just recording it and then putting it up? Oh, no, you're live right now. Rock on. All right. So, Dark Isle, where do you want to start? Uh, I would prefer to start at the beginning, but I understand if we need to uh, play loop-de-loop -loop with time here. No, I don't mind starting at the beginning. So, Dark Isle. Uh, in the beginning... <laughs> Um, there was a group of adventurers, uh, and the way that this started out was everyone chose, uh, you know, like anyone else, uh, choose their characters and we headed out. Um, the idea was that this was a group of adventurers that were setting across the sea to an previously unexplored island called the Dark Isle. Uh, they were promised untold riches fame, glory, when they arrived at this isle um, by an adventuring company that was making money off of uh, giving people back and forth, except it was so expensive, most people, including the adventuring party that came over, only bought one-way tickets, figuring they could buy tickets on the way uh, tickets back by making their fame and fortune while on. Unfortunately for them, when they arrived, they found out it was it's ended up being a scam. Um, the the region that they started out in, there was this magic barrier they couldn't go past. Um, there were incursions by monsters. People were going hungry. The previous adventures that came by the boat. Um, there were thieves. It was just general, just not a good... Um, also, they found that there were these giant walls keeping them in. Uh, and if they were going near the walls, their their health slowly drained away with them. Um, so the adventuring group set out to abolish or demolish the adventuring company that brought them, uh, including disrupting camp activities. Found out that there are there were an there was an elf settle, uh, settlement. I got some help from them. And then there was this cemetery, and in the cemetery, a lich, a queen. And they were promised foreboding things if they complied, but the adventuring group found uh, an alternative way to get past the barrier. Once past the barrier, uh, they found that they were in a completely unexplored territory. It was opened up, uh, and they came across this big city called Providence. Craig, can Prov I can I get yeah just a second here? Um, yeah, man. Because I'm trying to absorb a lot of stuff, and we just had somebody, uh, we just had Invictus drop in. Um, <laughs> do do you have an easy way to either provide like a visual aid um, or? Um, Visual aid. Like oh, yeah. Pictures. Yes, I do. But it's going to be the world map. So that may mess with uh, whatever surprise Sin had uh, done. But sure. Let's go to the world map. Why is there a giant cat in the middle of the Twitch? Please stop that. <laughs> oh my god. The Golden Girls. Oh, I see all these are the images of the characters. Well. I don't know if I can control the map, what's being viewed. Um, so it'd be hard to illustrate exactly what especially with these distracting things. okay go to the very top there you go perfect okay so <laughs> yeah basically right now um craig what i'm trying to get through is that was 
uh, that was a very large volume of information. Um, oh man, I was just... able to slightly keep up with, but not so not like a lot. The... Yeah, let me give you an abridged version, okay? Uh, because this is a hefty, hefty history, right? We've been going for what a year, maybe more. Um, you know, so let me give you the abridged, which is what I would, what I'd give any new people who are trying to this, this adventure. Uh, this isle is, this island is a unknown territory. And the adventuring group is trying to find a way to resolve all the calamities that are happening to them and to this and while they've been on this island it just seems like things have happened things have gotten from okay to work currently the group is in search of seven magical items and it is said that these items are if you bring them together, they give you the power of But set upon them is in a host of bad guys. But primarily, there's a lingering in the background. There's this, the dark one. Um, but also, they have, you know, your normal hosts of bad guys, including um, a rival adventuring party called the Decor Fan. So those are the kind of the main drivers. There, this is an open world quest, so very much like any other open world video game or whatever else, this is completely driven by the player. I am more or less, I have a, a story uh, that I weave into the fabric. I have the, you know, all the, this map adventures laid out, so as the group moves throughout the, the land, things may but this is very much a joint conversation instead of a uh, guided remedy. My job, the way I view it for the adventure, is to set the boundaries and give you hints of the story. And then when we get to certain places or things, I'll give you more. So I would say the difference is... This is more like playing Final Fantasy, where I think most games is playing a uh, a narrative. You know, um, actually, let me change this. This is like more like RuneScape, right? Where there's a shit ton that you could do. If the group wanted to play, let's go make make a bunny farm. Then hey, that's what we're gonna do, and things are gonna happen. Whereas I think most most games end up being like Final Fantasy, right? Where there's a, a hard story that you have to kind of follow. To. There's no such limit here. We are... There's just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and the side piece of this is I am trying to push the boundaries of five. I want to play with all the rules that make sense to me. Play with all the... Get all the monsters. Go all the way up from level one to... That is my driving. That is something I want to happen. And if the players want to progress with the main story, great. I will certainly try to push a little bit uh, the players to that. But if not, then great. We can find other stuff to do and it will happen. So is that is that a more manageable chunk? Uh, yeah, that's actually a good like initial framework. Um, yeah. Like the, knowing the format of the game... Um, definitely will be able to lead into its story um, elements for sure. So what I tell players as they are uh, building their characters for this game is there's two ways that someone would come to this group. You can either be from the island, and that means you have some history and knowledge specific to the island that you can bring to the adventuring group. Or you came over in one of these adventuring boats from the mainland, uh, in which case you have um, 
a certain motive that will be, tie more deeply to the story, but may not give you specific. Um, pretty normal character creation stuff. I use point by system um, for character creation. Uh, any UA material is generally okay with me. I don't like sci uh, the psychics nonsense, so you can't you can't do that. Um, the mystic is it the mystic class. I hate that uh, with a passion, so you can't do that. But most everything else can fly. Uh, this game has an inordinate amount of homebrew material in it. And so if you want to homebrew a character class even, um, we could do that as long as you do it with. Um, there are, and when I say a lot of homebrew stuff, there's pages of stuff that we could, of additional rule sets that could be used. Generally, it doesn't affect uh, the normal gameplay. Um, however, if you want to go deep on, you know, a piece of your character, like, okay, I, I'm a leather worker. I actually want to create leather armor. Um, generally with the player, I'll create a rule set that makes sense. Usually there's some rules on the internet and we can try to apply that. So quite literally we have drugs on, uh, drugs and drinking. We have, um, Poison. So all the poisons in the um, in the manual, the DM manual, they they give out stats and stuff. But how do you actually make that? How do you actually find and make those poisons? Well, we figured out a system for them, um, and that coordinates with the herbalist and alchemy um, homebrew stuff that we found online and and made into a system here. Uh, we have uh, we have extra weapons in. Uh, actually, right now, shields. We have extra shields in this. We have a tower shield, which gives an extra AC. We have a buckler, which we can use uh, with a with a weapon, one-handed weapon. Um, we have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, lycan uh, lycanthropy has been a big undercurrent uh, so far with this. So some of the players were actually stricken with lycanthropy. One still currently has it and trying to deal with those effects is something that the group has to deal with. What happens during a full moon, all those things. Um, they are running, they're going after a vampire, so if someone gets bitten, we'll probably have to come up with vampire rules. Like, how does that work? Uh, we have extra special metals, special woods uh, that all give extra stuff, extra bonus. Um, what happens in extreme weather? We have bonuses and and stuff for that because we had a section where they went into a desert and they needed we need to figure out a way what you know what does it what the effects of being in a desert are. so as we come up on this stuff we'll create something and if it's a put use it i like i like having an answer to something and it gives a an extra storytelling benefit we've had people you know get really tipsy and in fact one person right now is extremely tipsy as they're entering in a, a dungeon so they had they have bonuses right now to you know their strength but their constitution is that kind of stuff um so we weave this into the fabric of the game and if players want something we generally do. we have rules about downtime so background means something to me. uh, i don't like how background is thrown away a lot with most with most characters and creation and stories i feel like the way characters are built a lot of people put time into what background they choose they don't necessarily choose it for a skill set they want to be able to to do something so if you pick something i'll generally create special rules on how that functions so we've had um you know what does it actually mean to be uh a market a merchant you know what kind of bonuses do you get kind of bonuses do you get if you're leather we talked about leather working there's someone who does tan and make leather arm um what does it mean to be a sage or you know go to go to a wizard school all these things kind of taking place um and during downtime if the group wants to pursue it i'll ask if not 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 a big but i want to give people the option to play um the way that they want so okay. between 
between between the year and a half or however long we've been going, the extra rule sets, all the UA material, this can be a lot to. Uh, and yeah, there's a there's a learning curve certainly. I think, uh, I think Ben is the last one, and and uh, Mike, who joined in, recent the last month or so, month or two. You know they've had to to crawl up this hill, this mountain. But I think you're rewarded if you if you can. See. But I'm, I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat it. Yeah, like there. Yeah, it does sound like there's a significant amount of things going on. Um, Invictus, I'm gonna prompt also at you, um, if you wanted to drop in a question, uh, or if you at any point have anything going on. Uh, I do see that you're still hard muted, um, but if anything does come up like that. Uh, feel free. Um, Craig, are you okay with the, we're going to try to talk over you for a little bit and you're still (laughs) going to finish your point, but we'll get to ours eventually type of thing. So say that again. I want to make sure I got that. If you're talking, we're going to try to, like, I can try to overrun you a little bit and then I'll like, I'll, but I'll still let you finish and then circle back around. Oh, for the stream. Yeah. Right now. That's the cut. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yes. Okay. It'll be a natural flow. <laughs> Oy. Um, so I'm just going to go over, go through a couple of other things right now. Um, you do experience, not milestones. I do experience uh, milestones. So anytime uh, a group completes a fight, um, I'll hand out experience and divvy it up to the parties that are currently there. So we have different party members at different levels. The highest okay. level we have is 10. The lowest level we have is uh, 6 or 7. So generally, I'll bring you guys in at whatever the lowest level is or whatever I brought the last. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, social encounters or social... Um, in basically, social encounters or combats, um, are they resolved type in, kind of in that same way? Um, or is it kind of a more arbitrary... So all the experience is not um, is based on combat. Um, there is Dark Isle is a probably more can be uh, more heavily influenced or more slanted toward combat. I, I know the goal of most D and D campaigns is a fifty fifty split, uh, but because this is an open world um, and the players decide what we do. Um, we tend to spend some more time in combat. Um, it's generally, I'd say, about 60-40. So if the players decide they want to go off and just do dungeon quests after dungeon quests, then, you know, that's fine. I will support that. There are plenty of places where the people where you could just stay and do... If you want to build a, a merchant or a town and do no combat, that's cool, too. We can figure that one out. Um, I have no real say and how much and what we're doing so like all last session was all social there was no combat uh right there was no exp- but they found out information they they you know bought some items sim would have been proud with the shopping um that was done and so that was the entire time we spent you know this next session will probably be all combat as they're just entered a dungeon um, and forever how long that that lasts will completely be up to them. If they decide to flee, if they decide to push on. So this could be maybe two seconds. I don't know. Two depends, again, on how successful they are. Okay. Um, I guess that kind of barely slightly leads uh, player versus player. Um, yeah, yeah I don't talking... allow that. Okay, and that means also indirect player versus player? So indirect, I'm kind of okay with if this if it works for the story. I don't want to breed animosity. I don't I don't want players at each other's throats. Okay. Um, I I don't want them working against each other actively. Um, we've had in the past a character turn evil. Um, and in those cases, uh, I work with the player to figure out how much interaction they have, and then. In this last case, when the character turned evil, they no longer control the game. And so okay. the character turned evil, it turned into an NPC. I now control the character. 
they had to build it. Uh, okay. Um, let's see what else but we get here. I actually further that even a little bit further. So even though I'm controlling the character, I still actually consult the player on what they think that character. Um, I don't want to give away anything, but I want these characters to reappear because it's part of the fabric of the story, and I think it brings more weight. So the character turn evil will certainly show up again. Uh, and, you know, when he shows up, that's kind of up to the group and what they do. Okay. Um, I'm, I think I'm just going to go over a couple. Oh, Invictus? Yep, I'm sorry. I was playing with my sound settings, but I did have yep. a question. Um, I was wondering if you could... Uh, I guess get a general character character makeup or rundown on on who's who's in the game, what types of characters. Yeah. So, I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, I will absolutely 100% urge you to not worry about filling holes. Um, to absolutely play a character that you want to play. That was um, one of my questions. <laughs> Thanks. Because there are there are plenty of opportunities to fill whatever holes or needs. Um, and so let's say if there was no healer, there's plenty of opportunities to, let's say, make potions or trade for so you could fill that role. There's plenty of ways to make extra armor or weapons so you could fill that role. Um, I'm not too worried about that. We just introduced in this last session, actually, gunsmith. So guns are now part of the the fabric. But this one town makes guns. Um, and yeah, so one this. character decides, you know what? I want to be, I want my wizard to carry a gun. I see so, this picture of nubbins <laughs> with <yeah>. a gun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A wizard with a gun. Um, who, consequently, this wizard also thinks he's con, kind of, he had to roll on the madness table. He thinks he's a, a dragon and he has a propensity to throw fireballs over. You know, this is things kind of happen in <laughs> this thing, in this campaign. So I want you to be happy with the character. And there's plenty of ways to alter. I think one character, even uh, to fit the way that the that lycanthropy was affecting them, took, picked up a level in, uh, as a barbarian. You have to play the character you like. So I, I wouldn't. If you're asking to, you know, to pick uh, a character based on what holes are there, so you feel like you'd fill a spot, I, I really wouldn't worry about that. There's, a, I can guarantee you, there's always room here for to do whatever you wanted. Plenty of things. Additionally, uh, because we play on Saturday, it's a, it's a hard day, and understood. So that's actually why we always kind of want players. Um, you know, we, I think this group functions better when we have a higher number of characters. So I think most campaigns probably want four to six. I probably want six to eight characters um, going at it, one time. Because do you think it gets bogged down with that many? It Well, we figured out a way it doesn't. Um, there's only been a couple of instances when we've had, let's say, eight players on. Um, I would say generally because this is a Saturday game, I, I'm trying to get at least four people on it. Uh, originally, uh, I actually planned on this being kind of a West March. Where... A West what? I'm sorry? Oh, a West March campaign. Okay. Sorry, we didn't hear the second half of West. And I no, was like, no, West no problem. World? Let's just make some <laughs> fucking character, print yeah, them yeah. out, 3D print them. It's fine. A West March where yeah, there could be whoever's in at, at one time would go off in an adventure and come back. Um, but that didn't kind of work with uh, the group. But the idea that you know, a core group of players would just pick up wherever the, the team was and move it forward. Seems to have kind of. So that's why we kind of want 60. I would say at any given time, there's probably at least two to three people who can't show up on a Saturday. Just completely under. Yeah, and I'd say that the, um, that concept has kind of held through. Like, when I think of Dark Isle, I think of. I think of Athian, I think of Joe. I think of. 
Nubbins, and I think of, oh my god, I cannot remember her character's name right now, and I'm so embarrassed. Yep, give me a second, guys. Sorry. Okay. I got the, uh, the wife calling. <laughs> Do you want me to mute you? Yeah, I'm just going to mute right now. Okay, um, so Invictus, welcome to the channel. Welcome to Dark Isle. Um, Frigga, thank you, Casey. Um, my shame will be carried uh, probably through the rest of Dark Isle. Um, Craig is one of the five, six people um, that we have regularly run. Um, Dark Isle is Saturdays. Um, on Sundays, it is uh, we do every other week with the Burning Winds. That's me and Sin. Um, it is Fallout um, shoved into 5th edition rule set. Oh. No, keep going, keep going. Craig. Um, yep. Mondays are nothing. Uh, Tuesdays right now are an alternating uh, one-shot mobile. Um, soon to be followed up with a very weird combination, and I don't know if it has slots or what the deal is. Um, some combination of Shadowrun and uh, Homebrew from Athy. Wednesday's on the table. Um, so there's plenty of days, and there's plenty of people on the server. Uh, so if you get the itch yourself, um, to operate a game, uh, by all means, talk to us. Uh, we can see if it's the, like if we can fit a, find a time slot, find the right people. Um. Yeah, and I will say, uh, there's always a new game coming, so you can find yourself in four games all of a sudden, or and... like seven. <laughs> if yeah, that's I'm what not, you really want I'm not sure so, my wife would like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a common refrain um so uh my, myself I'm trying to wind myself out of games so right now I'm only in four thank you uh, <laughs> it is a lot but uh just, I think some of them have moved to every other because every other week because we have so many games going and there's usually someone that has an idea that they want so I think there's uh, the Ravnica. Let's say we have a Ravnica inspired or M Magic the Gathering inspired campaign going. That's every other that every week or oh, it yeah, doesn't really matter. Been... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Who knows? But we just have so many that are popping up. So uh, even if, let's say, the initial round of games don't interest you, uh, I can guarantee you within a short amount of time, a couple of weeks, there'll be a new game looking. So how do you, how would you describe the game in terms of, uh, <clears throat> I guess, grit versus um, cinematic? Like, is it dark and gritty? Can you, are our players faced with uh, onslaught from deadly diseases can they can they die easily or is this more like a uh, cinematic uh setting where you know players can just spontaneously choose to do something drastic and change the world and they can yeah um i, I i'm shooting for it could be everything um you know i think this is kind of an exploration this campaign so my goal as a dm i think for this to set forth the story and different plot of uh, things that the group can follow up on and to make sure that story uh, enveloping worth pursuing as far as how extreme i get i don't want necessarily characters to die i think uh that's tough uh however I need to enforce the rules. I can't let everyone just feel like they're a superhero and nothing can stop them. Um, so choices have consequences, even to the most seasoned. We had one of the most dead fast. His character, unfortunately, um, 
past, I should say. Um, and we're dealing with some of the effects now. And he'd been in there from the start. And because, it's, you know, he'd been here for the last year, he decided, you know what, maybe it's a good time to take a break. Couldn't, couldn't fault him out. So it, this, I'm not afraid to make those choices. However, you know, I'm not looking to do it. That being said, there are certainly areas that are above the level of the character. And I'll give hints, and the group can do what they want with the information I give them, and that's up to them. There have been definitely frequent times when characters go down, they're like, oh crap, we probably shouldn't be here, or we need to find more information, or something else. Now, so, so would I, you... I will say... Okay. I will. I will. Ins I do want characters to take an, act an active role in trying to guide them. So, um, if someone decides they want to do something crazy, and I haven't thought about that, I want them to follow that, and I want that thought to perhaps change them. Uh, I reference this as uh, curb your enthusiasm, but D and D, without you know maybe not humor. <laughs> this isn't a comedy, but at the same time, just kind of the improvisation, the improv of the plot is flexible enough to, to allow characters to change the, the world. And I think the slightest changes or things kind of have a ripple effect. We mentioned Nubbins with a gun and things with Dragon. Well, that madness has had this kind of subtle change and I want that change to be to reflect in what the group does. Right, I want that to mean something. I don't want it just to be some silly thing. We, so I, I'm putting things in for later. So what will that mean down the? I hope that is. Uh, I mean, to, to me, that roughly answered it. Uh, that it, char characters are special. Characters have, you know, rules. Typically, when characters die, it's for a good reason. Not you contract dysentery. Right, though, you know, hey, dysentery is a thing. You don't want to ford too many rivers. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, Invictus, uh, if you have any other questions, this would be a great time to pop them. Um, I actually just went through... Um, a session zero checklist, and I think we've touched on pretty much everything that's typically done in a session zero, uh, which I think is a great way to um, initialize uh, the like this this event. Um, Craig, I, I don't know how much uh, in depth you want to go. I know at the start we started to go pretty crazy deep quickly. Um, yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot of history and a lot of like little things that will come out uh, later on, you know, and some things that are, it, it, you know, I got through maybe, you know, before you got overwhelmed, I got through maybe the first three levels, All right, And we're on, I'd say level 10, right? So there's a whole other, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happened in this game that is, you know, that characters, some characters have now to know. So there's some references and I think some of that just you kind of have to pick up. It's like learning a language a little bit. You know, there's there's things you're gonna learn down the road. It's really hard to pick. Up. Yeah, and and I think that's actually going to be a great part of the experience for incoming players is to pick up on the little details. Um, yeah. So maybe we can go about it like this way. Um, how many? books would be in the dark aisle so far and then like what would their chapter titles be uh and then maybe we can expand a little bit on each of those and i think that that might be the, like the level that you're looking for so this is a good question and because i know um i know players were probably listening to you, um i've broken the island and i don't think the the island's areas are, are good representation story however it gives you kind of a, a, a scoping of where we are. I've broken the island up into about 17 or 18 different in general. Um, the group has investigated 
about half. So there's 18. I'd say about 9 or 10 is probably the amount of areas that the, the group has actually explored and found out information. Some they've just passed right through. And it doesn't mean they've completed everything. You know, right? I, I know it's a bad RPG analogy, but... <laughs> um, you know, there's a point where games open up in an RPG where after they've taken you through the tutorial, you've beaten your first monster, they've given you some a, a nice little magic item to make you feel good, they've leveled you up, and then they kind of throw you to the wolves like, all right, you're on your own, here are the keys. Um, we just passed that threshold. So I took them through a curated storyline and threw them the key. And now they are very much can do anything they want. And that is that means now all of a sudden their quest log is filling up. There are we went from having maybe one or two things to having Two, three, four, five, six, seven ish things going on right now. And I imagine that list will grow. Not sure. Okay. Um, Yeah, I mean, and that, and that makes sense that you that that it's story that we're going with a initial storyline, and now we've got the break open. Yep. Um, I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it easily digestible. <laughs> yeah, that's it's it, not, like that's the thing. Like, I don't know how much if I was a new new person starting out. Um, I I honestly don't know how much I would read. Uh, until it made, unless it had an impact on me. I think if I was coming on board, um, you know, outside of listening to this, which would be kind of helpful, I'd make my character, I'd get to know the group, and I'd figure out where I fit in first. I think that's first and foremost, right? No matter what, at the heart of it, this is a D and D adventure. You're with a group of people, like-minded people, who are just trying to have fun. Um, you know, role-playing characters that they made up. So I think that's first and foremost, just like any other game. Figure out some storylines. I'll give you a hook, more or less, or something for your character to kind of chase down or to know or something to get involved in the story. And then from there, it's, oh, hey, we got to do this thing. We have to do this thing because of X. And you get on board or you don't get on board. And then there's plenty of things to do while you're trying to complete that quest. And okay. You start picking up lore. You start picking up lore here or there. Or you want to explore some more homebrew stuff where I throw you guys something. Uh, like, oh, by the way, now you guys have to deal with this hurricane that's coming at you. Or whatever else. And just pick it up little by little. Uh, yes, and I can... Uh... No, oh, I just lost my idea. Gosh darn it. Uh, Invictus, if you could, if you got anything, chime it in. Um, uh, afraid I don't. <laughs> I mean, okay. I asked the main questions I was curious about. I yeah, had so it. I had it, and then I just like I couldn't get it out. Uh, so, Craig, I'm going to be really rude next time I have it in my head, and I'm going to run you over. Yeah, sure, go for it. Sorry. Um... So right now, uh, just so you know, we have one, two, three, four, five active. I'd like to add two more, one being you, Kyle, and one being a new person to the server. So we have seven. I think that would be a good number. Uh, we've had plenty of people come and go, and uh, so we have a backlog of characters that are no longer active. Uh, we have actually characters that are no longer active because they either got killed or they're in a coma. Uh, in the case of one 
uh, person. And so if that person ever wakes up from a coma, uh, that player has to figure out which one they want to run. All right? Because I'm not going to let them run. Um, so we just have a whole bunch. Uh, and then there's actually characters that have... Um, that have been NPCs that I've given to the team. Oh, this NPC is going to help you out. He has specific knowledge and specific skill sets that no one else here has that you guys will need. And obviously not in those words, but like here, here you go. So yeah, I agree. Okay. Got it. <laughs> what do, what do incoming players need to know um, about this location, this land, this world that is different from your typical high fantasy 5e experience uh, compared, let's say, compared to Forgotten Realms. Like, what major differences exist? Aside from the homebrew rules, um, yeah. like, I major mean, world things, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because it's a completely homebrew world, this isn't the Sword Coast. Alright, this isn't um, the towns and the cities that you're used to. <laughs> this is uh, kind of a brand new starting place. But if you're not familiar with it, that's not a. I don't think that's. Um, like elves exist. They're still slightly snooty and super hippies. Dwarves exist. Oh. Do they burrow downstairs? Fair, fair. Yeah, I think all are true. Um, I think as far as a character setup, like, everything is here. You're going to run into every single type of player character races and all that and i think i try to stick to php as best i can so you know all the preconceived notions are there uh and then depending on the city uh or towns right so some sometimes there's racism sometimes there's not sometimes there's a weird effect like the, t the group just went to a city created by gnomes right so it's a small little city they're giants Right, their Gulliver travels going through a city that full of gnomes, and these gnomes are backwood gnomes, so they've not seen really tall characters that often. And there's no place for the characters to, sleep. there's no inn or anything. So, uh, things like that. Uh, they while well, they were in province, province was the I would say a large city that you're used to in a normal five E campaign where everything and all the it really does the okay yeah is i mean as long as we're uh avoiding any oh you did that in this uh in this home world uh you roll a save or die like you know we don't have funky magic rules where if you try to cast a spell you could spontaneously combust oh yeah no no nothing like that um, no, but no say... like huge oh my gods no Nothing like that. I, I, I've i stuck to normal 5e. The only things that are might be a little weird are the extra equipment, the homebrew equipment. But those are completely optional rules. Like one person has opted. Yeah. Like, um, I guess I guess the best example that I could think of was you said something about the wall being like a life drain, basically. Yeah, so that happened. Um, and that was part of the story. Uh, so I wouldn't say that was like a, a 5e rule set, but that was definitely like a setting-driven mechanic. Yeah, and like that's kind of what I was looking to make sure that we didn't have any of was, hey, like that effect of the wall, but, you know, everywhere. Something that, right, you know, right. massively changed the world. And if not, yeah, then nothing like that. should do. Nothing like that right now. <laughs> you never know what happens in the but nothing like that. Okay. But lots and lots of history involved with Dark uh, Dark Isle. Uh, you know, if you are ever interested in the story, maybe we can through it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, but like you said, like there's too much, and there's a certain like you have to hit a certain level of detail if you're going to do detail, or you have to go way up top yeah. and i think i think the best the best was at the beginning when you went way up top and it's like there's an island uh you probably got suckered into coming here unless you originally lived here good fucking luck 
<laughs> um, and I think that that's probably um, the best story summary um, that you can give. And like you were saying before, you want the characters to have part of the say in the story. So the relevant story for new players is going to be the story that they pay attention to and help create. Right. And so for you, Kyle, um, if you are interested in, in doing this next, what I'd want to do is give you a character and then, um, you know, you can go ahead and, and make a character. Tell me, I just want to make sure you're within the round, you know, boundaries. I'll probably, I will need to give you a story hook why you're there at that location uh and we can talk about how we want that to to weave in uh your background uh how we want to make that real for you driving motivations for your character um and then because you are behind i generally give everyone like a unique or magic weapon or item it doesn't have to be a weapon um just to to make sure that they feel like they have something and they're not coming in blank, you know, because we have been going for a year. They've acquired stuff. Why um, Why do you default to weapon, Craig? Why, why Craig? Why? Is it because you're combat cause focused, most, Craig? No, because most people pick a weapon. This is the truth. You know, I, I generally say, okay, let's pick something. And almost everyone has defaulted to it. Give me that fucking decanter any day of the week, dude. Solves yeah. so many fucking problems. I'm into it. Really? Um, but yeah. If you, had a, if you had a magic decanter, though, then you wouldn't go out adventuring, would you? Well, no. I'd probably just fucking build moats for a living. So I think, actually, as you brought that up, I think one of the newer characters uh, picked like a magic deck card, and he can tell he can actually read people's. Oof. To some degree. Obviously, we had to make up, you know, how and when he can do this. Uh, and w what degree of accuracy. But you can certainly do all that kind of stuff. I have no problems with that as long as we work together to, to fit it in. And I think that I have no issue creating these types of things. If I think it's going to create some nice, you know, quirky outcomes or it's not. Um... Okay, yeah, no, I, I can definitely see that being a thing. Ooh, siege construction techniques, yeah, Casey. You go, Zashe, you go. You go siege. Yeah, um, yeah that, that was something he wanted to do, was figure out how to build siege weaponry. Figure out how to do it. <laughs> is it. Is it easy enough to give, like, a one-sentence summary about some of the major factions? And I mean, like, one sentence? Sure. Uh, first, there's no, I wouldn't say faction. Um, this is a very much a disorganized. I think there's a big bad uh, who hasn't really been explored too much. There are uh, a nemesis adventuring group, which has been a thorn in the side of the party throughout the, the adventure. There are issues wherever the party goes, generally, and they're trying to solve it. So, I, I couldn't really tell you about me for faction. It seemed to okay. Be no, that an organizing structure. That that's enough information as it is. Just by like there are there aren't factions. That, ooh. Wild, wild, dark Isle. <laughs> Yeah, see? Like there we go. We 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 kind of shoehorned, we kind of pigeonholed, not pigeonholed. That's that's bad. But there you go. Wild wild dark isle. <laughs> yeah, so I do encourage you Invictus before you you want to sign up for this uh this nonsense to to really jump in. Listen to a session or at least the first couple of uh, couple of minutes to a previous one 
usually within the first 10 15 minutes you get an idea of what's going on there's a rundown of hey this is what's kind of happened this is kind of what you guys are doing here are all the variables you can do uh so what do you guys choose to do and then the group takes it <laughs> oh there's casey i just turned on the twitch hey casey Yes, Spider Lord. Uh, that's true. Ram will be turning into a Spider Lord soon. That was the character I turned I referenced earlier. He uh, he stole some spider spider eggs, and it's about time we figured out when they were going to hatch. And it's actually they're going to hatch. We have a calendar in the game that governs when things happen, including like full moon stuff. So, uh, and Invictus, were you gonna say something? I saw your mic go off of mute. I've got eyes. I'm taking that as a no. I was, and then I forgot. I basically pulled a U. Yeah, um, yeah, that's fair. That's I literally typed mine out in all caps when I remembered it. So, so That's true. This. I'm glad Casey's typing all this. Um, I can go back, because there's certainly things I didn't... There are highlights to this, and I think this kind of highlights why this is worthwhile in in overcoming some of the is we do some crazy stuff. we had a large scale battle where the players controlled armies and so there are battalions of hobgoblins set the world on fire uh, at least around them which actually scorched the earth and changed the environment um you know they actually built the siege weaponry tons of uh yeah, I think yeah. I remember what I was going to say now. Uh, I, I think I mentioned this to you before, but um, so I'm I'm new to Roll Twenty, so I I've never done it before. I've only barely watched the tutorial, um, and I also haven't played Five E yet. I've played previous versions of Dungeons and Dragons and various other role playing games, but I haven't yet gotten the uh, the Five E books. Uh, I mean, do you foresee any? Uh, issues with that? Nope. Um, <laughs> I think 5e is the best set I've ever played, and that includes like the AD and D I played as a even though that sold a special place in my. I think it's um, it's simple and to its organization, and it's really flexible. So, as long as you can say what you want to do. Um, everything else will kind of take take care of itself. Uh, There's plenty of people in this game and right across the across all of our games that know uh, not just the roll twenty mechanics, but the game mechanics. And not, I, I can't, I, I really won't kid you. Like, there's still stuff I learn all the day, you know, all the time on stream while we're going. Mastery is not mastery of this, not just. Just trying to interact with the story is what it is. You know, as long as you are actively participating and having fun, that's all. That's all. The, that raises, the rest we can work with. Especially raises, if it's building a character, and if you're new, trying to jump up to seven is super hard. And I love doing that stuff anyway, so like I would certainly help you. Yeah, that, that raises a, a question for me in terms of, uh, you know, for, for somebody who doesn't know 5e, uh, you're going to have somebody, you might have a player who kind of clunks around in the system and may create an inefficient character, whereas a more experienced character might create more of a, I guess, power gamer. Yeah, or, uh, or I'm not interested so. in power game. Um, okay. No, I shouldn't say I'm not interested <laughs> in power game. I'm not interested in... I'm not interested in everyone being a power game. I, I actually don't care because like, I kind of am myself. If you want to, great. If that's how you enjoy yourself, honestly, have at it. That sounds, if that's how you, you're going to get, I really have no problem with that. I will give everyone an opportunity to, to you know, be the best that they can. I think one of our players has a 22 AC, which is crazy high, even for 5e, working on 23. I still throw things at him to make sure that he is, he gets rewarded for investing his time into them. I think that's important. Um, I like scattered characters or inefficient characters. They're a lot of fun too. So uh, do what you want. Uh, 
I would draw or say, you know, when I said I was not interested in it, I just want people to have fun or whatever that. Okay, so in fifth edition, it's almost impossible to build a bad, bad character. It's you can't. Um, all the way, the way bonuses add up, things are not, things are much, on a much more linear scale, um, as opposed to exponential with, uh, in terms of additive bonuses, you're only adding two things pretty much at any given time, unless there's some crazy shit going on to any given role. Um, so the rule set but itself is very intuitive. Yeah, playing in Dark Isle is not really the hard part. The hard part would be learning the 5e system while dealing with all the... I would say it's the exact opposite. Really, I think I think going from not playing 5e to a level 7 character is... There's going to be a lot of extra things at level 7 that you get that you wouldn't get starting at level Starting at level 1 is... Okay, great. These are your stats. This is this is your attacks. Here's the one or two things that, as far as combat goes and the social interactions here. The thing. And then as you build, every as you get increase in level, you get more things that. Here's the special thing that you can do here. Here's an extra spell or two. Here's an extra ability. And as you get further and further down the road, of a class, you become more refined in what makes you special and you get more and more things that I think trying to figure out what you do and looking yep uh, and yeah I, I mean maybe I'm probably obviously underestimating that jump um, Invictus I would be more than happy um, to provide a little bit of roll 20 and 5e experience um I do know that Casey's probably going to do two more one shots um, with level one characters that are specifically designed to be uh, basically put it as cinematic pieces. Um, so if you have availability on Tuesday nights, uh, I can flag you for the next one of those. And that would be a great introduction to fifth edition and rule 20 literally at the same time. I do, but I'm usually only available after 8.30. 8.30 EST? Eastern, yeah. Okay. I know it's going to be at least a couple... I know that the dates will probably be decided at least weeks in advance. Um, 8.30 EST is a little late, but it might be doable. And if not... Yeah, otherwise I would have come to the last one. Word. But yeah, no. It, it has a curve, but they've taken everything about the older sets of D&D and they've stripped down about 90% of the numbers and they only lost about 5% of the fun in stripping down 90% of those numbers. Yeah, I really love this. I really, really do. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll at least get the books and read them. Yeah, that's I like, fair. I like reading the role playing books anyway, so Yeah, no, that's uh, that's definitely a good fun place to start. And then I'm gonna redirect here. Um is there anything else that we wanna drop on this uh Dark Isle buffer here? Um Not currently. As I, yeah, I think we're this is still vaguely in topic, uh, but I think we're going to very quickly fall out of topic. <laughs> Uh, um, real quick at the end here. All right, hit me. What you got? See, that's the thing is like we covered all the session zero stuff at the at the beginning after like the Craig's super excited to lore dump everything part, <laughs> and then we decided that the lore dump is much better done in session or in character or with the character's history. Yeah. Um. We've mentioned the major things. So I feel very confident at this point. Great. So next steps again. Uh, figure out what you want to do, Kyle, as far as character. Let's have some discussion. I'll make you a character sheet. 
nifty. I agree. Uh, I'm going to cut the stream right now-ish. Um, hi, hi, Casey. Everyone. Thanks for lurky. Yeah, Much buddy. appreciate. Um, and see you on the Death Isles. Uh, what? Dark Isle? Death Isle? What? <laughs>